Hey there, Father Michael here. So, I did a thing yesterday. I did. I did a thing yesterday that I haven't done in over a year and a half at least. And it felt amazing. But it also felt super awkward because it had been so long. I wasn't exactly remembering how it was all supposed to fit together. And I wasn't sure really how long I should even like make it last or even even in what position I should like make my approach. No, it's not that. I know what you're thinking. It's not that. I haven't done that in years because I'm celibate by choice. I'm talking about hugging people, especially people I'm meeting for the first time. As a priest, as a parent, as a recovery specialist and a group facilitator, I nearly always feel like I, I just have way too much to get done and not enough time or energy or motivation or, or skills even to get everything done that I need to get done in the way I'd like to get it done. That is a real struggle. But you combine that with the fact that this world is a hot mess. This country in particular is a hot mess. There are still people in my neighborhood flying crazy alt-right Trump flags, showing their racism to all the world with pride. There are people flying a flag with the F word on it, feeling perfectly justified to say or do anything just like their loser orange god who lost the election, but they're so ignorant and wrapped up in their hatred that they refuse to see reality. And you couple that whole thing with the crazy anti-vaccine people people posting stuff on social media all the time that is like super dumb. Man, you look at all of that and this whole idea that if we just keep saying big lies over and over, somehow that's going to make them true. This country's a mess and I'm fearful for the future. I wish to God I had dual citizenship anywhere else in the world, because I'm pretty sure I would be making the plan. I don't trust the future of this country. I don't trust the white privileged power that controls many things in this country. So there's all of that on top of feeling like I can't quite get it all done and that what kind of a difference am I making? We're in, you know, the gay pride season. And you already know I'm not a big fan. I, there's nothing rainbow in my house. Uh, it never has been. On the other hand, it's a simple justice issue. Just a couple weeks ago, I have, you know, I was called a liberal faggot by someone. And it, with the insistence that there was absolutely nothing this person could learn from me because I'm just a liberal faggot. 
man, that got me off my game for a good 48 hours because I couldn't believe the power of that kind of hatred, particularly by someone who claimed to be a devout Roman Catholic coming at me like that. The fact that so many so-called Christians continue to support hateful policies, anti-woman policies, anti-child policies, is frustrating to me. And it adds to my feelings of powerlessness. If I look back over the 14 years of my ordained ministry, sometimes I wonder, what if I just haven't given enough? I've given man countless hours, blood, sweat, and tears. But what if my best efforts aren't enough? What if I was mistaken? What if I was mistaken all along and was just pursuing my own egocentric agenda all along, trying to convince myself that this was the right thing to do? That is a hard place to be. A really hard place to be. And I gotta say that when I woke up yesterday, I was definitely feeling some kind of way. Feeling like I had failed, that there was not much I could do. And then, lo and behold, two amazingly positive things happened to me. After the first service, a young family who's only been coming for a couple weeks asked me how can they become official members and how do they have their child baptized because they feel so at home. They love what they're hearing. They feel so welcome and they have not been church people but they feel like they found the place where they finally fit. That was pretty amazing. And after the one o'clock mass, a new, a new couple people had shown up and we were talking and I gave them some literature explaining the difference between old Catholicism and Roman Catholicism. And one of them said to me, would it be okay if we hugged? And I was so off my game, like I said, but it was amazing, even though I wasn't even sure I was doing it right, because <laughs> I don't remember exactly, does my head go this way or does it go this way? What, you know, what, what happens here? It was a beautiful moment. It really was. So there it is. And I should add that these people found us through YouTube. So, two weeks after Pentecost, there I am feeling some kind of way. And the Holy Spirit, you know, she's, she's always on time. She swoops down on this pastor, reminding me that I never have to rely on my own power alone, my own cleverness, my own uh, anxiety, my own skill set. I just have to give what I have. I just have to be what and who I am and she will take over and do the rest all in her good time. I'm preaching self-care and rest and Sabbath time for everybody that I know. And today, today and tomorrow are my Sabbath days. I'm taking the time to rest and renew and reflect and 
all of that today and tomorrow because I already know that I'm not worth a damn if I don't take care of myself. Jesus says to us in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 26, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that Abba God is going to send out in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. It was true when John wrote those words, it is still true. The Holy Spirit has a tendency to swoop in and fill the vacuum of hopelessness. That's kind of her thing. So today, if you are one of those people feeling some kind of way, feeling like maybe doing your best isn't, isn't sufficient, isn't enough to make a difference, take a breath. Take a breath and remember that the Spirit of God is upon you. Little things can make a big difference. And you may not always see it. Just try to trust that that is true and wait to see what happens. Let's pray. Mighty, powerful, ever-blowing spirit of the living God, we thank you for the tongues of fire you have planted in our hearts. Today, gracious, creative spirit, help us to be grateful for the many gifts you have given us. And if we are doubting in this moment that we are enough, that we have the skills or the patience or the energy to do the next right thing, strengthen us, empower us, show us that we do not have to do this life all by ourselves and remind us that our best is always enough. That if we give ourselves to you with a pure heart and pure intentions, you will surely use us in your ongoing evolution of this universe. Thank you for the gift of life today. Amen. Have a great Monday.